Just a reminder to download or reactivate your old Church Center app as we have moved back to Planning Center from Subsplash. Moving forward, all online signups and giving will be done through Church Center. If you are looking to dedicate a lily in honor of a loved one for Easter, your $20 in memorial form are due back today after service. Extra forms could be found on the table next to the Connect Center. This month, we're starting New Testament Survey. This is a great time to join our monthly Faith School of Ministry classes. Whether you are pursuing ministry credentials or just want to learn more about the Bible, we will meet this Tuesday, March 26th from 6 to 8 p.m. See Pastor DJ for more information. Join us this Friday for our Good Friday service at 7 p.m. as we remember the sacrificial love of God's Son. And again on Sunday morning for our special Resurrection Sunday service. Together, we will celebrate our risen King at both 9 and 11 a.m. If you had signed up to help serve at our Easter egg hunt yesterday, just a reminder, it has been rescheduled to this weekend, Saturday, March 30th in McAdoo, located at Veterans Memorial Park from 1 to 3 p.m. There's still multiple opportunities for you to serve if you haven't already signed up with setup, teardown, greeting, providing prayer, sharing the gospel, crafts, games, and food. You can sign up at the Connect Center or via the app today, and we hope to see you there. If you had signed up to help serve at the Easter Bunny Trail at City View Park today, just a friendly reminder, setup begins at 11.30 a.m. All other volunteers and activities will begin promptly at 1 p.m. after second service lets out today. We hope to see you then. All right, good morning, church family. How is everyone this morning? Oh, cold. I bet you're cold. I know I was cold. Uh, but anyway, it's still a beautiful day to just be here in the presence and house of the Lord. So I'm so glad that you can join us. If you want to stand to your feet, go ahead, greet the neighbor next to you. Welcome them to church this morning. If you see anyone new, be sure to tell them hello as we just rejoice in the house of the Lord. Yeah. 
for you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that you came down to this earth, Lord Jesus, that you washed away the sins of the world when you laid down your life for ours, Lord Jesus. We thank you. I needed rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, and you call me a citizen of heaven. are you to be praised Lord God how you are just our living hope Lord Jesus we just pray for your presence Lord Jesus your spirit to be here among us Lord God we welcome you King Jesus that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night and through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written jesus christ my living So great a mercy What heart could fathom Such boundless grace The God of ages Stepped down from glory To wear my sin And bear my shame Cross has spoken I am forgiven, the King of Kings calls me His own, beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living.
came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the silence. The roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. He came the morning.
Jesus be glorified All through this life
would like to bring up to the baskets at the altars, you can do so now. As we just continue in this time of praise in the presence of our King, may we give him all the honor, all the glory. Jesus, and you will continue to do, Lord, through each and every one of your children that are here, Lord. I pray for your peace. I pray for your presence and your guidance to just be among them within their lives each and every day, Lord. Lord, I pray right now that you would fill us, Lord Jesus, with the desire, the desire to Lean in, Lord, to draw closer to you, Lord. 
as we put away the things of, of this world, Lord Jesus. May we hunger and may we thirst for you and for you alone, Lord God. We pray this all right now in your mighty name. Hallelujah and amen. Amen, church. I'm going to go ahead. You guys can be seated. Kids, you are dismissed to Kids Church as we have a special missions video for our Mission Sunday today. Well, hello, we are Pat and Brenda Mahar, and we are your missionaries, pastors at ICF Padova in Italy. And we just wanted to come out here and reach out to you and just say a big thank you for all that you've been doing uh, to keep us on the field. Uh, you make a great impact in us reaching the lost here in Italy and throughout Europe. Um, over the past uh, five and a half years that we have actually been in Italy, God has done tremendous things and he has built this church. He has built his church uh, for his glory. And we had a full house this morning and we continue to see God's house full each and every week. God is healing. He's delivering people from various vices and he is just working miracles in so many lives. And uh, we just want to thank you. We also are celebrating 30 years of full-time ministry overseas as missionaries. And some of you have been supporting us for the entire 30 years. And we are so grateful for that, uh, for your faithfulness and for your prayers. And we're so grateful that you reach out to us from time to time through various uh, social media platforms to just touch base or send an email or a card. And uh, it just encourages us so much. Thank you very much. As we celebrate these 30 years, we are not stopping. We are still going uh, strong and God has some great things in store for his kingdom and for ICF Padova. Brenda? Yeah, we love you guys and we pray for you all the time. You don't just pray for us. We also pray for you. We love you. Thank you so very much for all that you do for us. God bless you. All right. All right. Good morning, Faith Church. That's the Mahars. Let's give God praise for them. Amen. They are our missionaries working in Italy that we support. One of uh, nearly 50 missions, uh, missionaries and organizations that we support. And so uh, today is Mission Sunday. I'll show, share about that in a moment. But I want to welcome all of you uh, here this morning, those of you watching online. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning. Uh, there's just such an, a feel and anticipation in the house of the Lord this morning. And I believe that God is going to speak to us. But if you're newer to our church, maybe this is your first time visiting with us or uh, online, we'd love to get to know you more. There's a connect card in your seat, or you can scan this QR code we, uh, to fill that out. We have a free gift for you uh, at the Connect Center on your way out today. Thank you for being with us. Uh, again, today is Mission Sunday. Uh, years ago, we used to have the fourth Sunday of every month was Mission Sunday, and we would celebrate it. And we kind of lost that along the way, uh, but we're resurrecting that. Uh, in the month of February, I'm assuming you were here, uh, there somewhere in the month of February, uh, we did our Missions Month, and it was a fabulous month. Uh, just God reminding us that we are to be love in action. Uh, and all of you should have received a love in action missions pledge card. And uh, we had, I believe, some record-breaking uh, pledges uh, this year. Over about 57 people filled out these cards and said, Pastor, we want to be connected to missions. We want to give. We want to pray. We want to go. We want to be uh, involved. And uh, we're so excited uh, for your involvement. If you did not get a chance uh, to make a financial pledge or a prayer pledge, these are out on our newly renovated missions uh, 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 wall over here. You can grab... A, on your way out to the right, uh, pledge forms and check out our missions wall. I'm not sure some of you fly in here if you ever see our missions wall, but uh, we just recently updated it. It's beautiful, has all of our missionaries on it, has uh, missions information, magazines that you can take and read and, uh, and give away. But we want you to be involved in what God is doing, not just in our community, but around the world. So uh, when you come those four Sundays, you can make sure you give to missions. Also on our app, you can give to missions as well. Uh, speaking about the app, just a reminder that we are switching from our new app back to our old app 
uh, because the new app didn't work like we thought it was going to. And so we need you to download the new app, Church Center, uh, for your giving, uh, to sign up for events, uh, and to be a part of that. And how many know you don't know until you try, right? And so we tried and we kiboshed it. So <laughs> it did not work like we thought it was going to work. But that's all right. I, hey, listen, I would rather, and I always say this to people, I would rather you try 10 different ministries in the church until you find the one that is yours versus just sitting in the seat Sunday after Sunday and doing nothing. Amen? So it's better to try and fail than never try at all. And that goes along with everything that we try to do for God's work. Amen? So switch back to the old app if you were. And since we're talking about missions, uh, we have a great missions uh, program here called Operation Blessing. It is our food distribution ministry. Do you know that we serve about over 300 families a month? 300 families in Luzerne County a month, uh, plus even others that come desperately in need. And uh, so we uh, encourage you, you can give to Operation Blessing financially. Uh, you can ask how to get involved with that. But we're going to extend Operation Blessing to be more than just food distribution. Uh, there's a couple in our church, or some many people, who want to start doing clo clothing distribution. And uh, we're going to start collecting as you're doing your spring cleaning uh, we don't want your junk. We don't want your stained shirts, okay? Uh, we don't want your ripped uh, sweatpants. Uh, if you have anything that is good quality, uh, you know, barely used or new that you would like to donate uh, for this ministry. And it's really going to be a mobile ministry. We're going to be uh, taking our, our black and gray trailer, our large trailer. We're going to be outfitting it with clothing. Uh, and we're going to start this upcoming Saturday. Uh, we, we postponed our McAdoo egg hunt uh, because it was going to rain a little bit yesterday. Uh, we're doing it this Saturday coming up. And so we're going to take our mobile clothing unit there but we still need some clothes, especially children's clothes. If you have any kids' clothes, uh, just go ahead. Feel free to root through your children's rooms. Take whatever you want you know, out of their closets. They won't mind because they like new stuff. So uh, donate whatever you can. We'll need it by this Wednesday uh, for get ready for Saturday. But as you're spring cleaning this year, okay, we want to ask that you will just look at the quality of clothing that you want to give to your community to help these families as we go into McAdoo, Nanticoke, Hazleton City, uh, Weatherly, wherever God uses this clothing ministry. So we're excited about that. Amen. So that's some ways that you can get involved. And also, I mentioned the McAdoo uh, Egg Hunt. Uh, we have joined with the Lions Club, and they've asked to come alongside us. So next Saturday, it's going to be a big event at Veterans Park uh, at a 1 to 3 p.m. Uh, but we could use your help. We need to make sure we have enough uh, we have over about 3,500 eggs to scatter. We need security. Uh, we need preschool workers. We need elementary age workers. We need games, food. We need the whole gamut. Some people who were signed up for this, this weekend can't make it next weekend. So I, see, I need some fresh bodies. You know, if you're breathing and can walk, you can do this, okay? Uh, Ron, that means you too. You can do this. I know. So um, sign up out in the foyer on your way out. There's a table there. Let us know, hey, we're in. We're going to do the clothing distribution. It's going to be a great ministry event. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Uh, something else that is exciting. How many have ever watched The Chosen? You ever seen The Chosen, the first three seasons? So a lot of you have. It's a great, great production. Well, right now, they are making available. It was in the movie theaters, season four. They are making it available for churches to show for free. And so starting April 7th, uh, we're gonna watch. We're gonna watch the fourth season together on Sunday nights uh, at uh, 6 p.m. Uh, we'll be joining here starting April 7th. Uh, it'll take, I think, I forget, maybe uh, five five sessions to watch them all, five meeting gatherings. So yeah, we're gonna join here in the sanctuary. We're gonna enjoy some fellowship and watch uh, two episodes a night, I believe. So it's gonna be a great evening. We. Invites you to come out, and it doesn't cost you anything. Amen? Uh, so that's a wonderful thing. I want to show you just a little trailer before we get into Word about this new season of Chosen. So can we run that? Darkness is not the absence of light. It is more uncontrollable and sinister. You were there waiting. I guess the darkness is not dark to you. And 
bist. Not always. The coming darkness was too deep for us to grasp. It would appear that we now want the same thing as Pilate. Senior leaders in every district should question and expose Jesus. I just can't stop seeing how we could be doing things faster and more efficiently. You deserve a stipend for your specialized work. You can at least make sure that you have resources to keep the mission going. My ledgers are in the red. I told you to make life difficult for the followers of Jesus. It is on this rock that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This infernal chaos. Why can no one control these people? What just happened to all of you? It's about to get worse. Now that I'm here, Physical death does not interrupt our eternal life. Lazarus! Come out! I remember you wishing there could be another way. And looking back, I do too. I still don't know why it has to be this way. The bitter often mingled with the sweet. You told us it would be like that with how you lived. The man of sorrows. Acquainted with grief. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? So I hope to see you here on Sunday nights. It's going to be a great time of worship and just celebrating Jesus through this production. So invite friends to come. Invite family to come. It'll be a great event. Are you ready for the word of God this morning? Amen. Do you have your palms today? You see your palms? Let me see them. Wave them up in the air. Why, why do we call the Palm Sun? Do not hit your neighbor. No, do not do that. I saw you, Betty, trying to hit your husband. Um, Palm Sunday. What is this all about? Palm Sunday. Well, we're going to learn a little bit more about that today. Uh, but as you know, the story we're going to read from the book of Matthew today you see that people were taking branches off the uh, palm trees as he was entering into Jerusalem and laying them down. And so uh, as we look at palms and we hand out palms, it's not a, a, just a tradition. There is significance. And I encourage you to keep them. Some people make uh, crosses out of them. Some people do other things with them. Uh, but you, you keep them because here's what it symbolizes. A palm symbolizes goodness of God. It symbolizes the victory that Jesus Christ, right, uh, brought to us. It's also when they, were, when they were waving the palms, it was a way of, a, it's like a welcoming, a welcoming of a king. And we're going to talk all about that today, and you're going to see how that plays into it. And I thought of just as, because uh, we're not, you know, a traditional church per se, but I like giving out the palms because it, it reminds me that we're welcoming Jesus into our church, and we're welcoming Jesus into our hearts and our lives. Amen. I hope that's what you're doing with your life and with uh, your relationship with God. So that's why the palms are there. Uh, and feel free to take some more on your way out and hand out to your family. Uh, we were going to hand them out yesterday at the McAdoo event, but we didn't have it. So we have uh, only about 500 uh, or so. So um, we're going to hand those out uh, throughout today. But I want to encourage you, uh, let's get into this Palm Sunday. Because here we're going to see Jesus riding in on a donkey and he is about to change the world forever. He is about to do something that no other man has ever done or could ever do. Because not only was he a truly a man of God, the son of God, but he was also fully God. He was about to change the world forever through a courageous entrance into Jerusalem. And as he came into Jerusalem... He was going to be arrested. He was going to be unjustly convicted, crucified, but most importantly, resurrected. I want to encourage you this week to just not treat this week as a normal week of March. Online, on our website, Pastor GJ has laid out several week, 
week's worth of devotions, what they call Holy Week. That you can set some extra time aside this week and reflect on what Jesus Christ has done for you and what he's done for me. And as, as he rode into Jerusalem on this Palm Sunday, and, and we, we realize what is about to happen to his life, he deserves some recognition. He deserves for you to spend some time reflecting in the scriptures and spending time in fasting and prayer and, and just thanking him and being grateful in your spirit and, and seeking after him deeper during this week when we are about to celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in a special way. I especially want to invite you to this Good Friday service coming up. Because Good Friday is, a, is, a, is, a, is kind of an ironic term it wasn't so good because Jesus was nailed to the cross and died that day. But it was good because Jesus was nailed to the cross and died that day for your sin and for mine. If you've never been to one of our Good Friday services, it's a very somber, purposefully somber occasion where we, we worship, we hear the sounds of the cross, we reflect on the cross through a, a message and then we take communion in a unique way and we celebrate his sacrificial death on the cross. So I encourage you to come and, and be a part over that. And then on Sunday, somebody say hallelujah because on Sunday he rose from the dead, amen? As we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the grave could not hold him. He overcame death and sin and hell, and uh, we are gonna celebrate on Easter Sunday. But here's what I need you to do, a couple things. One, uh, I need you to bring somebody with you on Sunday. As I've been sharing with you, there's two times a year that people are open. What? Christmas and Easter to come to church. And you have an open door for evangelism by inviting someone. All of our invites are all gone. Praise the Lord, 500 of them. Uh, but I want you personally to invite someone and say, would you come to Easter service with me this week? Second thing you can do, uh, for those of you that are physically able, could you park all the way down below? because we're expecting larger crowd than normal, and uh, some of you could use the extra steps. Hallelujah. <laughs> I didn't look at anybody, Corey, uh, when I said that. Um, so those of you that can, park further away. Leave the best spots for our guests. Amen. And the third thing you can do, Sean is in here, over here. Um, if you could volunteer next week, we need some parking lot attendance. Um, uh, we might need a few extra people uh, to help ushering people to their seats. If you're willing to do that, uh, this service, would you see Sean afterwards? He'll be in the foyer, I guess, uh, at the Connect Center. Just let him know, hey, put me down uh, if you need me um, to, uh, to help out in any way um, because I'm believing God's going to show up in a big way and people are going to be mo just moved towards Christ. Would you pray with that with me this week? that God will use this week to just change people's hearts and lives. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. Lord, for the next few moments, would you now just, ah, Lord, just take our minds and our hearts and make them yours. Open us to receive, Lord, this word about who Jesus really is and what part he has to play in our lives. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. He knew that when he did that, he was going to trigger political and religious authorities against him. Jesus' mission required him to demonstrate this incredible courage regardless of the outcome, regardless of the reaction of others. He was going to do what he knew his father had planned for him to do. I want to speak a message to you today called The Courageous King. And one of the leading questions I'm going to ask you up front to be thinking about is does the King Jesus have authority over you? By all worldly viewpoints, when you look at what we call Holy Week, it was nothing but failures. The failures, uh, uh, the failures of Jesus as man would see it, these sufferings that he went through, contrasted God's nature of love with mankind's nature to control and die. You know, if you squeeze a lemon